Timestamps will be down in the description. Tip one to help you get the most out of your Samsung Galaxy Tab S9. So by default, when you swipe down on the notification panel, it takes two swipes to get to your brightness slider. Let's fix that. Go ahead and tap on the three dots up here, and you're gonna select Quick Panel Layout, tap on that, and then you have this brightness control option. Go ahead and tap on that, and you wanna switch it to Show Always, tap on Done, and now, when we go to adjust our brightness, the brightness slider will be right there. And just so you know, when we do get One UI 6 that rolls out later this year, this will be the default behavior when that arrives. Tip number two, some Android apps just don't work as well as their web-based counterparts. Let me show you an example of that. Here I have the Canva Android app open, and this is what I use to make thumbnails for the channel. It works well and all, but I can't pinch in to zoom, and I don't have any edit modifications that I can do to the panel layout, so I much prefer the web-based version. So let's go ahead and learn how to set up a web page as an actual app. First, you want to open up Samsung Internet Browser. Tap on that. Then you want to go to the website that you want to make an app. Here I've gone to canva.com and I've logged in and now you can see I can pinch and zoom in on all my stuff and I can modify the pane layout. To save this web page as an app shortcut so we can get back to it easily, go ahead and tap on the hamburger menu up here in the top right hand corner and then we're going to tap on add page to. Go ahead and tap on that and I'm going to go ahead and pick the home screen and basically it's going to allow you to give it a name. We'll go ahead and hit add and it's gonna create a one by one widget that you get to drop onto your home screen. So what I'm gonna do is just tap and hold this. In just a second here, I can move it around wherever I want. We'll drop it right there. And now when I tap on this little icon, it's gonna take me right back up to Canva, which I'm already logged into. So I much prefer this over the Canva app, and you can do this for any of the web pages that you like as well. For tip number three, let's learn how to block system-wide ads. You know, the ads that come up when you're uh, looking at your Google feed or you have an application open and it prompts you for an ad. Let's learn how to block them real quick. Swipe down on your notification panel and then you want to tap on the settings cogwheel. All right, we're going to go ahead and go into connections, more connection settings, private DNS, and then you want to select private DNS provider host name. And you want to enter this in right here, dns.adguard. Dot com, hit save, and now when you're browsing through your feeds, your ads will be gone. At the most, you'll see a little bar that shows up right here, and it'll give you the opportunity to X out of it, but even that's pretty rare. It pretty much blocks them all. Next up, I highly recommend you head out to the Samsung Galaxy Store and download Samsung Goodlock. With Goodlock, you can customize your lock screen, customize your keyboard, change out the theme entirely. You can completely modify the S Pen experience. You can create your own wallpapers. You have all kinds of options for Samsung Goodlock. I'm gonna go ahead and drop a link down in the description for a full tutorial on Goodlock to get you up and running. If you're new to Android, you might not know this next tip, but let's go ahead and share it together here. Swipe down to your notification panel, tap on your settings cogwheel. All right, we're gonna go all the way down to about tablet. And then you're going to want to click on software information, or I should say tap rather. And then what you want to do is tap on build number like eight times. Just do that. All right, it's going to ask you for your PIN. I'll go ahead and put that in. Once you've entered your PIN, it's now going to enable developer options. You'll see that here on the left side of the tablet. We now have developer options. There's a lot of different things you can fine tune on here, but the main takeaway for today's video is to speed up the animations. And if you scroll about halfway down, you're going to find those three settings right here. Window animation scale, transition animation scale, animator duration scale. Go ahead and switch all these from 1x down to 0.5x. And I'll show you what that looks like. We're going to do that real quick. 0.5x. Now when we go through our UI, everything is basically twice as fast. Developer options, a lot of fun toys to play with in that section. All right, this next tip I shared in a couple past videos and it still applies here to the Tab S9. I think it's a great tip. Swipe down on your notification panel, tap on the settings cogwheel, then you wanna tap on connections, and then you're gonna to wanna to tap on Wi-Fi. And then once you have your Wi-Fi menu open here, go ahead and tap on the three dots up in the top right-hand corner. And then you're gonna select intelligent Wi-Fi. Go ahead and tap on that. All right, once you've done that, you're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom and on yours, you're not gonna have this Wi-Fi developer options until you do this. Tap on intelligent Wi-Fi about eight times. Just do it over and over and over again and then it's gonna finally enable Wi-Fi developer options. Go ahead and tap on that. Once you've done that, I want you to tap on the middle option here, nearby Wi-Fi information. Tap on that. 
And then you're gonna pick the second option over here. Go ahead and tap on that. This is gonna show your signal strength across your 5.8 and 2.4 gigahertz bands. But where the benefit really comes in from viewing this page is right at the bottom. You're gonna get a notice of the best channel recommendation to use with your Galaxy Tab S9 on your home Wi-Fi network. So it's gonna give you the best 2.4 gigahertz channel and the best 5.8 gigahertz channel. And what you wanna do is open up your router settings, which is usually an address like 192.168.0.1. Yours may be slightly different than that, but it's usually something similar. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna change the channel for each one of your bands on your wireless router to be the recommended channels that Samsung is showing here. This is gonna give you the best Wi-Fi performance on both 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz. For this next tip, did you know that you can extract objects out of images and then save them off? It's pretty awesome for content creators like myself. Let me show you real quick. What I've done is I've taken a picture of Andy here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna tap on the gallery to open up that image. All right, here we go. We're gonna tap on it. Now what you're gonna do is just press and hold on the image in the photo. So in this case, we've got our little Android here that I call Andy. We're gonna tap and hold. There it goes. It's gonna prompt you for some options. You can copy it, put it in a text message, save it to an S note, save it to a PDF, whatever you want. You can share it. Or what I'm gonna do right now in this example is save as an image. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do that. It's gonna save a new image to your gallery. And when we open this up, you're now gonna see that the background has been completely removed and we have a very high detailed, very good job of removing the background from our Android Andy here. This is great for us content creators that wanna do this for our thumbnails. For the next tip, don't forget your Samsung S Pen has Bluetooth Air actions, which are pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and learn how to turn that on and how to use them. Swipe down on your notification panel, tap on the settings cogwheel, and you're gonna scroll down until you get to advanced features, which is right here. Tap on that, and then you're gonna to wanna to tap on S Pen. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure the Air Actions toggle is turned on. And to get a brief description of what Air Actions are all about and how to customize them further, go ahead and tap on the text. And that'll open up this dialog showing you how to customize each of these apps. Now let's go ahead and see some of these Air Actions, well, in action. So we have Spotify open with my favorite band of all time. What we can do is we can pause and play the music, right, by pressing the button. There, it's paused it. Now we're gonna play it. We can also raise up the volume by pressing the button while raising the pin up like this. Just do that each time you wanna press the volume up and you can do the same thing for lowering the volume. We can do the same thing in YouTube and you can also control the shutter controls in your camera by using these air actions. For this next tip, did you know that you can have two copies of Samsung Notes open so you can copy from one note to another? Let me show you how to do that real quick. Let's go ahead and open up Samsung Notes like we normally would, right? There it is. Let's go ahead and open up a note. I'll grab my video ideas notes. Then what you wanna do is you wanna swipe down on the notification panel. You're gonna open up settings again, and then we're gonna go down to display. Go ahead and tap on that. And then what we're gonna have here to the right is edge panels. Go ahead and tap on that. And then what you wanna do is make sure it's turned on and go ahead and tap in panels. And you wanna make sure the default apps panel is enabled and you should have Samsung Notes already in there. If not, you can go ahead and customize it by adding it by picking this edit option. Once you've enabled this, let's go back to our Samsung Notes. All right, now what we can do is we can grab the edge panel from the right-hand side and what we can do is grab Samsung Notes, tap and hold on it. All right, what we're gonna do is drag it over here, drop it on the right-hand side, and now we can open up another note. A great way for you to copy and paste between two Samsung Notes. Another awesome tip, if you're hosting a party or you're watching a movie and you're casting out to a Bluetooth speaker or some other audio device and you don't wanna be interrupted with all your notification and sounds that come in, you can split out the sounds to where the sound for the media is playing on the external device and all your notifications and calls and all that will only go to the tablet itself. Let me show you how to enable that real quick. Swipe down the notification panel. Let's open up the settings cogwheel again. Now we're gonna tap on sounds and vibration and then we'll scroll all the way down until we get to separate app sound. And now what we can do is turn this on. All right, select. And now we get to pick which applications that we want to only have the audio played out on the secondary audio device, whether it be your Bluetooth speakers, your Galaxy Buds, whatever earbuds you may have connected, while your notifications themselves will only show up on the tablet.
Another cool little trick for the Tab S9 is we can make our video content like YouTube videos, Netflix, HBO Max, etc. We can make those videos brighter than anything else shown on your screen. Go ahead and swipe down on your notification panel. Once again, the settings cogwheel. And then we're going to scroll all the way down until we get to advanced features. We're going to scroll all the way down on the right until we get to video brightness. Go ahead and tap on that. And we have natural and bright. And if we enable the bright option, we can pick what applications we want to enable this for. So like, for example, I have YouTube enabled. So what happens is, is when I open up YouTube and it loads up a video, let's go ahead and grab this one here real quick and we'll pause it. Boom, it just bumped up the brightness a little bit on the screen. It's probably not gonna come through very well on the camera, but you will for sure see it in real life. A great way to bump up the video brightness for when you're viewing media content. All right, for this next tip, by default, when you get your Tab S9, you're gonna have these navigation buttons at the bottom. They work great and all, but the problem is, is they take up valuable screen real estate. As you can see here, it bumps up all the icons and we don't have any use for this bottom part of the row. Let's go ahead and fix that. Swipe down on your notification panel. We're gonna go into the settings wheel again, tap on that, and we're gonna come down to display, tap on that on the left-hand side. Now on the right-hand side, you wanna scroll all the way down until you get to navigation bar. Go ahead and tap on that. Now you're gonna have the option for buttons and swipe gestures. I highly recommend you get used to swipe gestures to make the most use out of your screen. Let's go ahead and enable swipe gestures. And what that's gonna do is on the left-hand side here, that's gonna pop up your recent apps. This middle button is gonna be your home button, which will take you right back home. And for the right button here, this will take you back one page for whatever app you're in. And now you can see we have this valuable screen real estate back and the icons have shifted lower. A great way to get more use out of your screen. For this next tip, I recommend you change a setting. So by default, when you get your Tab S9, Dolby Atmos is turned off for some ridiculous reason. Swipe down on your notification panel, swipe down one more time so we can see our quick toggles. Go ahead and swipe all the way over and you're gonna see Dolby Atmos right here. Go ahead and toggle that on. It's gonna be off by default. You definitely want this on to get a more spacious, more boomy sound. You'll hear the difference right away. For this next tip, did you know that you can use your Tab S9 as a second display for your Windows PC? I've got the Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360 and now I've got the Tab S9 as a second monitor. We can even extend the display or duplicate it, whatever you want. Let me go ahead and show you how to set this up. Once again, swipe down on your notification panel. Swipe down again so you show all your quick toggles. Go over one screen, and then you're gonna have the second screen toggle. Go ahead and tap on that. It's gonna prompt you with this screen. Leave this screen up, then go over to your Windows PC, and you wanna make sure they're on the same Wi-Fi network. You wanna go ahead and press the Windows key plus K. That's gonna provide you with your sharing options. You see here we have Brian's Tab S9. Go ahead and click on that. Give it just a moment to connect. And there we go. We are now connected. We have the option to allow mouse and keyboard input right on the secondary device as well. And we can choose to duplicate it, extend it. And if you wanna change those settings later, you can also press the Windows key plus P and that'll let you change the presentation mode. And then to disconnect from second screen when you're done, you can either turn off the toggle right on the tablet itself, or you can press the Windows key plus K again and then select disconnect, and that will disconnect your second screen session. For this next tip, let's not forget about Samsung DeX. Whether you're using the slim keyboard or the book cover keyboard, or if you're using an external keyboard and mouse, you have the ability to turn your Tab S9 into virtually a PC. And the way that we do that is by using Samsung DeX. Here's how you access it. Swipe down on your notification panel, swipe down again to show all your quick toggles. You're gonna scroll all the way over to the right, then we have Dex. Go ahead and tap on that. We're gonna hit start. Give it just a moment to load up. And now what you have is a full on Windows experience. And as you can see here, I have multiple apps open. We can move them around however we like. You can even maximize them, resize them, do whatever you want. You even have a start menu very similar to Windows. So it basically turns your Tab S9 into a Windows PC experience. Don't sleep on Samsung Dex. For this next tip, by default, when you press and hold the power button, we get the Bixby Assistant. I much prefer to have the power on and off window. Let's go ahead and learn how to switch that real quick. Swipe down on your notification panel. Again, open up the settings cogwheel. We're gonna scroll all the way down on the left-hand side until we get to advanced features. 
All right, now on the right hand side, you want to tap on side button. And then we're going to have the press and hold option, which is the second option. Go ahead and switch this to the power off menu. Once we've made that change, your power button is now going to behave like this. There we go. That's what we want. All right, so for our final tip for this video, we have a lot more coming up, that's for sure. I like doing these tips and tricks videos. This is a dynamic AMOLED 2X panel, which means it's OLED based. You're going to get a lot better battery life if you keep this thing in dark mode. Swipe down on your notification panel. Once again, tap on the settings cogwheel. You're going to scroll here on the left until you get to display. All right, tap on that. Light mode, dark mode. Put it in dark mode. Reap the benefits of saving battery life. Also reap the benefits of having less concern of OLED burn-in. If you have any questions or comments about today's video, please drop them down in the comments section below. I really do appreciate your time. And as always, thanks for watching.